Hello everyone, Mr. Google here. Welcome to episode 2 of the Intel Budget Gaming PC. If you haven't seen the previous episode, which is episode 1 of this specific gaming PC, you could check it out to see the unboxing and the parts overview and why we chose specific parts. If not, continue to watch this video and you will see me build this PC and we'll show you guys where to look out for and what kind of stuff you will have to do and not do. Starting off with the RAM, in our case Crucial Ballistics, a single 4GB 1600MHz DDR3 stick. Make sure the notches align over there while having the levers open at the side of the RAM slot. Press it inwards like this, just be a little bit careful and it should fall and click right in. Make sure it's totally fit in correctly and then you can go ahead and remove the CPU and the CPU cooler from the original box. This is the CPU guys, for those who didn't quite know it, leave it aside for just a little bit longer. And the same thing goes for the Intel stock cooler with the thermal paste already attached to it. We are not going to use an, another cooling mechanism because this is well more than enough even when overclocking. Next thing, motherboard on the card box it came with. Open the lever like this, carefully open it and just to be totally sure it isn't already damaged when you bought it it would be wise to check this a little bit for any bent pin or connector or whatever you might see from it once you find out that it's actually a good motherboard in the box remove your CPU and carefully align these notch over there this is just a little indicator error which should be aligned with the motherboard same thing goes for these two there is basically just only one correct way of aligning it onto your cpu socket on the motherboard so if you're using common sense and you're just being a little bit careful you should be good to go um, however it is one of the most exciting parts and it's one of the most dangerous one if you are being yeah a little bit on the rough side so carefully place it inwards like that and it should fall right in you shouldn't have to bend it or whatever apply pressure at this part but the next part is one of the most exciting ones please remove the plastic cpu socket cover over there and keep it if you will have to send it back for rma or service for now double check the cpu make sure it fits in correctly close this cap carefully Hold the lever, press it downwards a little bit like this. You do have to apply some pressure. When you're just about down, move it sideways and slide it under there. Now that you have secured the CPU in the socket from the motherboard, it is time to use the stock cooler, which has already gotten some thermal paste on it, which is also very good, so don't worry about that. The stock cooler is also sufficient for overclocking for guys who are interested about that. So it isn't required to use the ability to overclock the CPU. Those twister pins, bent pins or turn to twist pins, however you want to call them, make sure they are turned clockwise and if you want to release them, so remove the socket, turn them counterclockwise. Those arrows indicated on the pins are a little bit confusing when you're first using this but they should already be in the correct position when you unbox it so if you haven't turned them make sure and double check that and press them all downwards after you have done that it will make a clicking sound but just to be sure turn the motherboard around they should have about the same height as all of the other white plastic pieces coming through the motherboard so you have four of them check all four of them and if one of them isn't placed correctly, turn the motherboard back around and try to apply some pressure to the according thumb screw or turn to twist pin on the Intel stock cooler again. And proceed to double check it when you turn it around once again. For now, this is the cable that makes the CPU fan spin. So detach it for now just a little bit and I'll show you guys how to attach it later on. So as you guys can see, this has a motherboard layout. In our case we're using a smaller motherboard and I will not use all of these screws. But this case also fits bigger motherboards so if you want to go and try SLI or double SLI I'm not totally sure but you can fit in larger motherboards. For now use the 
motherboard standoff screws or standoff socket thingies you'll have at your motherboard in our case it came included with this case and it should also be included with other cases as well but before we are going to place down the motherboard we should use the motherboard back panel over there because if you place the motherboard at first and you're forgetting this step you'll have to detach it again so as you guys can see i have a little special thing that came with the case which makes it a little bit easier to apply the motherboard standoff pins right over there in the case. Uh, just so to let you guys know, I wanted to include all of the screwing into this video, which makes it a little bit longer, but I did speed it up just quite a little bit. I don't think it would be that interesting to see me screw all of these things in real time, I guess. To find the according screws, use your manual which will come with the case if for some reason it was not included in your case then you will have to find it on the internet I'm sure there are lots of PDF documents on the internet as well I know they are available for the ASUS motherboards I used for the MSI motherboards I used and some other as well for friends of mine when they required some help so shouldn't be all too hard but after you've done that make sure all of the screws are attached correctly double check them and now it is time to apply the power supply in our case we are using the corsair cx430 a non-modular but efficient 80 plus bronze certified power supply which is very nice it's well capable of providing enough power for even the most powerful modern single gpu card so that's pretty upgrade sufficient if you decide to upgrade in the near future or in the further away future or whatever for correctly installing the power supply it's just a matter of attaching four screws right at the back at the back side of this power supply it will throw out the hot air and the other fan on your power supply is where it intakes so if your fan is facing downwards it will intake air from there in this case our case cold air so do not place it on a carpet but if you wanted to face it the other way around you can do that as well for the specific case cables we are using HD audio in our case it has to be placed right over there do not use the other connector which is also attached to it and the front USB which is what we are going to use for the front panel USB we are going to place it right over there the power switch the reset switch and the LEDs for the power switch and reset switch is something you will have to look up in the PDF document of your specific motherboard attach the connector from your front intake fan right over here next to the 24 pin connector for your motherboard which is directly from your power supply so click this inwards attach it on your motherboard make sure it fits in right correctly and you should be okay also we have to use a four pin some motherboards use eight for applying power to your cpu in this case we are using a four pin up next is removing the front panel by pulling it away like this this is in order to be able to install the dvd drive and the hard disk correctly we are going to use the one terabyte drive i mentioned a little bit earlier and for the dvd drive we're going to use a simple samsung they are pretty cheap so if you want to include a dvd drive you can do that but make sure you align it with your front panel of your case like this before you are going to attach all of the screws required to bolt it in right here you have two on your left and you have two on your right another way of securing them instead of using the normal screws you could use the plastic quick pins or the quick fasteners I, in my case I like to make it a little bit more secure so I am using the screws same thing goes for the hard drive you can use the quick pins to make it a little bit faster and easier to hold it in place over there but if you want it to be a little bit more stable and safe overall I suggest you use the according screws that came with your case as well if this is your first time building just be careful in general and you should all be good to go just use some common sense and then afterwards after double checking you should be able to go to the next part after you've made sure that the drive is right in place and all screwed up 
make sure the SATA power cables like this are all connected. In my case, I use one for the hard drive and one for the CD drive. And the next part, which is important, are the SATA cables, which are data cables. And they transfer data from your CD or hard drive to your motherboard and vice versa. If you have an SSD, plug it in right over here because SATA 6 gigabytes a second, SATA 600 is the fast connector. So if you are using an SSD, place it over there. If not, place your hard drive over there and connect it accordingly. In my case, we are using one SATA cable for the hard drive and one SATA cable for the DVD drive. It isn't all too hard, it only fits in one way. Same thing for the video card. After you have done that, go to proceed to the video card. It only fits in one way in one connector, so it isn't all too hard. Just be careful while placing it inwards. Remove the back panels over there and then make sure it fits right in place with two screws to secure it over there. Not all too hard. And before we forget, make sure you connect a 6-pin power connector to this video card. In this case, it's a 260x AMD video card. Pretty cool. If you want to, you can also add the PC speaker over there, which gives it a bleeping sound when you boot up the PC. If you think it's ugly on your motherboard, you can also remove it. I have done that for my own PC. <laughs> Now that you have double checked everything and we have built this PC, connect it to the power, boot into your BIOS by pressing Dell at startup, go to the boot options and the first boot op option should be USB or CD. I am booting from a USB drive so I change it to that. I press the escape button, save and exit because you will have to save this option otherwise if you reset it won't load. In my case as you can see I'm using a USB drive to boot up to Windows. And up until that, it's pretty straightforward. Press next, 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 next. Install, yes, yes, yes. And you are good to go, guys. If you watch this video and you used it to build a PC, let me know in the comments down below. It would be very nice to know. If you guys liked this video, if it helped in any way, or if you just enjoyed the video, please consider to subscribe and like the video down below. And as always, guys, Thank you for all of the support and liking all of my videos, especially 1 out of 10 people who like my videos. And see you next time. Goodbye.